Ladies and gentlemen, members of the CBCA board, uh, distinguished guests, short listees, authors and illustrators, it's a great pleasure to be here this afternoon. Uh, my name's Tony Wilson and this moment is extra special for me. Every author dreams of standing up here at this, the most prestigious children's book award ceremony in the country, casting eyes across an audience of one's peers, thanking them for the honour and privilege of being judged for the year as a children's author who stood out against all others as the one best suited to tell people to turn off their mobile phones. <laughs> uh, not only that, but it's uh, my job to tell you where the toilets are. They're sort of that way. And by the way, if you need the MC to tell you where the toilets are, you should be having these books read to you uh, instead of creating them. On a more ceremonial note, uh, another of the duties that falls to me is the welcome to country. I'd like to acknowledge that these awards today are being held on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people, and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners. Uh, I also wish to pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. In my experience, Margaret's love books and reading uh, my mother, Margaret, certainly deserves more credit than anybody else for making me firstly a reader and secondly an author. And I dedicated my first book, Granny Saurus Rex, uh, to her for good reason. As kids, she took us every month to the Baldwin Library and we looked forward to the visits, yes, partly for the new books, uh, but also because she let us go to the adjoining McDonald's, uh, which shared the library car park and which she was, would otherwise never allow us to attend. Uh, and to give you a sense of what sort of a Margaret she was, and, instead, and indeed still is, uh, she'd bring her own individually wrapped baggies of salad to McDonald's and insist that we put her tomato, her lettuce and her cucumber into our cheeseburgers. <laughs> Big mags, she called them. Honestly, what a woman, uh, what a Margaret. It's my great pleasure to introduce two other great women. One is also a Margaret and also committed to getting kids reading. And the other is a Margot, uh, who I believe is just like a Margaret, but with more go. <laughs> to represent the Children's Book Council of Australia and to offer a formal introduction to today's proceedings, please welcome the Chair and Deputy Chair of the CBCA, Margot Hillel and Margaret Hamilton. I don't think Margaret actually wants to stand up the whole time, but we'll say hello to her and, and we'll be hearing from her again shortly. So welcome uh, everyone to this historic occasion, the 69th year of the CBCA Book Awards in this historic venue, Swanston Hall, part of the Melbourne Town Hall, which was opened in 1870. And I'd particularly like to extend a special welcome to all our creators and publishers, to David Riding, Director of Melbourne's City of Literature Office, our guest speaker for today. You've met Tony, so I don't need to welcome him again. To CBCA board members, you'll meet some of them during the awards announcements. To the girls from Janet Sarno and their teachers who are up the back, they've got a special treat in store for us today at the end of today's program. And to all the other students here, after all, you as young readers are what the awards are really all about. To the CBCA branch members, our awards coordinators, Trish Montgomery and Sue White, all the way from Perth, and I can't see either of them at the moment. There's Trish and Sue's over there. <laughs> and our indefatigable judges who read 434 books for this year's awards. Would you all stand, please, so we can th say thank you on behalf of the CBCA community. <laughs> Just as well Tony wasn't up here, he might have had something to say about people who stood up who weren't judges, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to acknowledge and thank a number of people in helping to make today a wonderful celebratory success, other than the authors, illustrators and publishers, of course. The CBCA Victorian branch for their financial support. Victorian board member Debbie Hatswell, who's over here. Deputy Chair Margaret Hamilton, whom you've met. Victorian branch 
President Christine Aldred, who's over there and you'll see later. Uh, immediate past president of the Victorian branch, Mary Moore, who's up at the door. Lou Smith in the Victorian branch office, who's also taking photographs today. All of them contributed in a range of ways, designing programs, organising AV, sourcing cylinders, tying ribbons on cylinders, organising tables, patiently changing running sheets, which seem to require changes daily, receiving and collating replies to invitations and all sorts of other tasks, too many to mention here. The event really would not have been possible without them. I should tell you that I only got back from England on Monday night, and so I did all this long distance. Without them, I really couldn't have coped. And thank you to our MC, Tony Wilson, and our guest speaker, David Riding. And I'd also like to thank Melissa Patsouris, the event sales coordinator here at the Town Hall, who's been unstinting in her support for this event, and also the Town Hall AV team. And Caroline Kennan from Caroline Kennan Creative Projects, who generously donated her time and expertise to uh, decorate the hall today. And I'm sure you'll agree it's made the hall look wonderful. And finally, perhaps we should all thank the Rail, Tram and Bus Union for calling off <laughs> their proposed public transport strike today, which was worrying me somewhat. Just a little about the judging. Each year publishers enter books in the awards and judges read, review and exchange reports for every title accepted for entry. The judging is guided by the criteria and categories stated in the awards handbook. The judging panel consisted of eight judges whom you've met, one from each state and territory in, um, in Australia, and they reviewed the books for older readers, younger readers, early childhood and picture book. Judges for these awards, uh, judging for these awards commenced uh, early in May 2014 and concluded during the judges' conference held in Perth in April 2015, during which notable books, shortlisted books, honour books and winners were all decided. And as you can tell, judges are also good at keeping secrets for many months. The Eve Pownell Award was judged by a separate panel of four Perth-based judges. As most of you will know, this year is the Children's Book Council of Australia's 70th birthday. 70 years of enjoying and promoting the best of Australian literature for children and young people. 70 years of engaging the community with literature for young people. 70 years of judging the best books each year for children and young adults, and 70 years next year of presenting the awards for these books. Not bad for a not-for-profit, entirely volunteer organisation. Today is a prelude to the annual Book Week too, during which every year schools and public libraries across Australia spend a week celebrating books and Australian authors and illustrators. Teachers and librarians conduct activities relating to the theme to highlight the importance of reading and many a favourite book character will make an appearance at schools across Australia this week. The awards ceremony has changed rather since the beginning when women who won the award received a camellia and not even a plastic one so it probably didn't survive the day and the men a handshake. Now we're able to award prizes which are funded through the CBCA Awards Foundation. The founder and continuing manager, Margaret Hamilton, will speak to you shortly. I'd also just like to take this opportunity to remind publishers to submit their books for next year's awards process. The judges are having withdrawal symptoms and need more books, so please send them to the national office. Enjoy the day, everyone, and thank you for your support of our work. Ladies and gentlemen, Margaret Hamilton. Thank you, Margaret. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I'll tell you when I get to them. <laughs> I think it's really fantastic to be here. It's a very exciting occasion, and I think it's... Um, terrific to see so many of the authors and illustrators here today um, who are the best in the world. Uh, but they wouldn't be here without their publishers. I think we should um, acknowledge that, the, that there are so many publishers here today as well. Um, they deserve recognition and thanks for their contribution to Australian children's books. 
um, because picture books particularly rule the world. Um, and if they were up against, um, up, up there with the best in the world. So um, this is where Margot took the words right out of my mouth. The CBCA was established in Sydney in 1945. So this is the year of our 70th birthday. And when the first Book of the Year awards were presented in 1946, the winners received a camellia, and it was a real camellia, if they were female, and a handshake if they were male. Following the establishment of the CBCA Awards Foundation in 1996, a huge fundraising campaign realised our aim of $1 million to fund prize money for the awards. Um, <clears throat> people said we couldn't do it, but that was like raving a red flag to a bull. We, we did it, and there was lots of celebration at the time. Many of Australian children's publishers were major donors, giving $5,000 and over. These major donors represented here today are Hardy Grant Egmont, HarperCollins Australia, Random House Australia, University of Queensland Press and Penguin Books. And please forgive me if, I haven't, if you're here and I didn't know it, but I'd like to acknowledge you all for your, with thanks for your contribution to the Awards Foundation. Also represented here today are two benefactors. Benefactors who gave us $20,000 or over. And the first one was Alan and Unwin, and then there was Scholastic Australia. Scholastic have been the largest contributor with $50,000. And I've challenged other publishers to match that, <laughs> but so far been unsuccessful. Um, Alan and Unwin was, was a major donor at one stage and then I had lunch with Patrick Gallagher and said, because you've been so successful with Harry Potter, why not give us some money? And so <laughs> he said, this is an expensive lunch. So uh, he, they became a, a, um, a benefactor of the Awards Foundation. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge Scholastic and Alan and Unwin for their magnificent contribution um, and to Australian children's books by being benefactors to the Awards Foundation. Many authors and illustrators have also contributed um, to the Awards Foundation and I thank them also for their generosity. It's all about having actual cash to provide prize money for the awards, which is a huge encouragement for winning an honour book creators. Please give all of these people a round of applause. <laughs> So it's very exciting to be here today to see the presentation of this year's awards. We've come a long way in 70 years and let's hope we're still here, not, well, not personally, but, <laughs> well, maybe so, I don't know, um, in, in 70 years' time. And, and just to, t to let you know, we're still accepting contributions to the Awards Foundation, so please see me afterwards if you're keen to donate. Thank you very much. It's one of those days when you think you've got the best job in the world. You get invited, I'll just put my glasses there awkwardly, get invited to celebrate books, fantastic books, and there's cake. <laughs> but I'm really scared I'm going to trip up into the cake on the way out, so if I keep looking at it. Um, there were so many great jobs, uh, and I was reflecting on that today because obviously we have the Melbourne Writers Festival on, we have the Romance Writers Association on. I work within the Wheeler Centre, great places to work, and then I was looking at the shortlist and the shortlist and thinking being a judge would be the best job being forced to read because no one has enough time to read anything or everything. Then I thought, well, they have to pick a winner and that'd be really tricky. So possibly the best job is being a reader and it's good that it's been acknowledged by everyone so far, but we are here for readers and it's something in the literature industry we occasionally forget. It is all at the end of the day, it's about readers and that's the most important thing and it's the reason Melbourne's the UNESCO City of Literature. To get a city of literature, you have a defining reason, one sort of flagpole you put up to say why you should be it. And Melbourne said it's because we have so many readers in, in the city, and as we do in the country, and, and the percentages are just high. I think the last Australia Council assessment on literature was 87% of people in Australia identified themselves as active readers. Um, and I know you can throw statistics around and they can sort anything out, but it's a big number. And when I catch the tram in when they're not striking, there's everyone's reading. And it's, it's a magnificent thing. So to be a city literary, you have a defining reason. Edinburgh is its history. Iowa City got it, got it for the Writers' Workshop. Reykjavik, because I hold the Viking text. I won't go through all of the other 10 cities. Um, but that's the reason. And 
with that defining reason, you're using it to embrace literature across your city and to activate literature across your city. Um, so it's not just reading being the only reason. Um, all the other cities, they have this esteem about being a city of literature. They have their history, they have their organisations. They're really proud of being a city of literature. When we mention in Australia, and I'm talking city of literature, don't think I'm being parochial, I'm not saying the rest of Australia is not fantastic. I'm from Perth, it's a long way away, it's quite nice. I've lived in South Australia, lived in Sydney. They're all fantastic places, so don't think I'm just thinking Melbourne is the capital of everything good. It is. Um, <laughs> but when you mention in Australia we have a city of literature, there's a bit of a disbelief. There's kind of, really? We're a city of literature with Edinburgh, really? Um, and also we have a city of film in Sydney, which is, uh, again, people are surprised. And the, the, the initial Australian reaction is, what do we get from it and how much money? And, OK, that's fair enough, but I think it's a bit of an Australian reaction to how good we are. And Margaret's saying we're world leaders. We are actually world leaders. One of the things I've seen in the 11 months in the office, I've been so fortunate to go to a few of the other cities already um, and been connected with them. We are so far ahead of the other cities of literature and what we do in literature, but we don't realise it and we don't celebrate it. Now, looking at Melbourne as a bubble and just pushing away the obvious big ticket items like the Wheeler Centre and picking three at random. So we have Melbourne uh, Writers Victoria run a Writers with Disability program. No one else in the world does that. Um, what's my other example I had there? There's lots, just want to make... Um, we have a bookshop in Melbourne that does funding. Readings fund for literacy. That doesn't happen anywhere else, but it's just normal for us. And we have a state library which runs a Kids and YA program as its core business. These things don't happen, and we just kind of don't see ourselves as leaders. Um, Children's Book Council is another great example. When I accepted to come and talk to you today and eat a lots of cake, um, I, I talked to my colleagues in the other cities and said, what do you have like the Children's Book Council? And there's a few obvious ones, but half of the cities have no celebration of children's books. They have nothing like this organisation which works on very little resources for a very long time providing this platform for children's books. And I think they should be celebrated. And I think it's magnificent that we have this turnout and it's 70 year, years old and I'm sure they'll be giving out flowers and handshakes for another 70. Um, but we really need, do need to celebrate us being very good. And, and we have 87% of readers, but they're not reading Australian books. And that's the core challenge. And in this bubble of we are here, we all believe in Australian books and we believe we're good. But occasionally, I sometimes think we don't think we're as good as we are. And we need to celebrate that and we need to make our bubble bigger. And I need to stop hitting that microphone. So that's kind of a long little bit of a rant because you are the converted, but we need to make sure that we are doing more and getting more people reading our books. And that's kind of core to what I do in the office in a sort of long-winded way. I look to make sure we celebrate Australian writing, literature, bookshops, libraries, because they're all good. We've got the number one comic shop in the world in Melbourne. We've got the number one library in the world in Melbourne. It's things that people go, really, have we? Oh, but we're Australian. It's, um, it's our challenge to make sure we re remember how good we are. Obviously, what can we do more is the question. As a question that I ask, I don't have the answers. I know possibly the first answer what we can do more is give out the shortlist and award the older uh, book. So I think I've got my running list now. So we're going to... No. I'm going to thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> David, thank you. <laughs> and I say that even though you've only been in the job for 11 months, I think we've already become more of a city of literature since you've taken over, David. For starters, MX is gone. Um, I think we can uh, put that down to you entirely. And people are back reading on the trains, as they should be. Uh, but certainly you've done a wonderful job and thank you very much for being our keynote here at the CBCA's uh, this morning.